Hi YouTube. Welcome back to my series on the psychology behind the fear of firearms, or hoplophobia if you will. Um, there's been a lot of discussion lately about fear and hoplophobia uh, on YouTube and in general about the gun around the gun owner community. Uh, Fate of Destiny put out a video on it with Colleen Noir a while back. Um, Natalie Foster also put one out with the NRA recently. Uh, and these are excellent videos. They're great videos. Uh, they give a very good overall synopsis, uh, general overview of the principles that we're going to dive more into detail uh, throughout this video series. So I encourage you to go find those videos and watch those as a supplement to this video. Uh, they have excellent information in them as well. Um, I'll also link those in my description at the bottom of this video so that you can find them easily. So fear. What is fear? Um, gun owners say that a lot of people out there uh, have an irrational fear of guns and a lot of that is true. Um, in the opposite spectrum, uh, the anti-gun crowd or the people who propose and support further restriction of firearms rights uh, like to claim that gun owners live in fear or are fearful for wanting to keep their guns and carry them. Uh, that is slightly true, but from a different perspective than what people uh, accept that statement as. Uh, and they're also neglecting to admit that they have the same fears because that principle gives them some sort of upper hand in the debate, or at least that's uh, how they, what they feel it does. Uh, so what is fear exactly? Uh, fear, in its simplest form, is an emotion. Fear is also a psychological survival mechanism, but we'll get back to that later. More importantly, fear is a learned emotion. We do not inherently fear something without some set of information or circumstances which teach us that an item presents a danger to us and is likely to cause us harm. Now understand, that harm can be in many different forms. Uh, it can be something which scars us emotionally, causes us some form of emotional distress or pain. Um, it can be something which uh, causes us physical harm or presents a danger to our physical well-being. Well Once we've subconsciously made the correlation between an item and it's causing some form of pain, that is teaching us to fear that item because we don't want that pain. Uh, this brings us back to the point of it being a survival mechanism. It is our natural instinct to address things which cause us harm. Fear, in essence, is the ability to recognize that danger or something that is likely to cause us that harm. That recognition is what then motivates us to react because we know, without even thinking about it, that we must react in order to avoid being hurt. How you react is a choice, but recognizing the danger is fear, and that can be subconscious. Hence, why fear is a survival mechanism. So, how do we learn fear? Uh, where do we learn it from? Well, fear can be learned from a variety of things, it can be learned from historical experience and then passed, through, passed down through generations by education. It can be learned from cultural influences. Uh, think in terms of something which caused a loved one some sort, of, some sort of pain and then they relayed that back to you by telling you about their experience. This then teaches you to develop some sort of fear to that same instance that they experienced. Uh, it can also be learned from a traumatic event. Uh, for example, a child who falls into a well may be likely to develop some sort of fear, um, fear of the dark, fear of heights, fear of tight spaces, uh, and similar fears. The specific fear which the child develops will sort of depend on what that child feels is the cause of their pain in that experience. In essence, they would be blaming some aspect of the event which is easy to notice. This takes us back to my previous video 
and our natural tendency to stereotype information. If the child doesn't understand where or how he made a mistake, which landed him in that well, um, then he's likely to subconsciously ascribe blame to something else involved in that situation. All he really knows is that he experienced a great amount of pain and misfortune, doesn't know why, and so he feels the need to blame it somewhere, stereotyping it based on his other experiences, so he knows what to avoid later on. Uh, this is typically whatever is easiest for them to identify as a potential danger based on their ex other experiences that they're, they're already familiar with. Um, and thus, stereotyping the information they have, in this example, it would be an effectively stereotyping. Now, that we have understanding uh, how stereotyping several experiences together can develop a fear, uh, we realize that any sort of repetition can lead to this same effect. Uh, just as with child falling into the well where he doesn't understand what causes that situation, it is that lack of knowledge, that lack of understanding that led to his fear being developed. The foundation to develop a fear is ignorance. It is a lack of knowledge. This is because we naturally fear the unknown, because we don't understand if it presents a threat to us or not. This is a concept that was uh, first made popular by Sigmund Freud uh, in the early 20th century, I believe. Um, but for example, let's say you're walking down the sidewalk and out of nowhere something loudly crashes on the ground next to you. Instantly you jump, your heart rate spikes, and uh, it simply makes you react because you don't know if whatever made the noise poses a danger, poses a threat to you. Um, that is, until you look at it, realize what it is and that it poses no further danger. Then you begin to settle down, but what you just experienced in that situation is a survival mechanism of fear, which motivated you to react for your survival. That is what fear is. You just experienced what is commonly known as a fight or flight response. Your body perceived a threat to its survival. That fear induced chemical reactions in your body, which enabled you to react to ensure your survival. But understand, it is the lack of knowledge which allowed for this fear to develop and exist. The same is true for all fears the lack of understanding something is providing the foundation needed to develop an irrational fear of it. All that is then needed are repetitive negative pieces of information or experience where you will ascribe blame for pain to that same object which you know nothing about. So how does this apply to guns in society? Well. That's what we'll discuss in my next video. So if you like the information being presented so far, or even know somebody that may apply to, share these videos around, subscribe to my channel, give me your feedback, and together we'll get this information out to people who could really probably use it. Until next time, stay safe, Simplify.